from God to share today with everybody. Very serious word of God I'd like to share today. Uh, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 4. And I, I was thinking the other night, I was thinking about things of God and things of America and things of people and things of different uh, troubles and situations and uh, things of salvation and the and the, 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 the power of God sat down on me and, and spoke to me for a moment about uh, some scriptures over here in uh, Matthew chapter uh, 11 and verse 4. It said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go you, go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And he, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So basically we have uh, Jesus going through that glorious uh, line item of different miracles that's been happening. And he said, go tell John about this. The, the lame are walking, the blind... Uh, are, are receiving their sight. The dead are being raised up. The poor have the gospel preached unto them. Lepers are cleansed. And he's going through a litmus test of great things that's been happen, happening in the country uh, through the ministry of Jesus Christ and the power of God being brought to, to mankind. Now, in chapter 11, if you'll jump down to about verse 17 or 16, he said, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is likened to children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped to you, you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber a friend of publicans and of sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Then in verse 20, this is about where the Lord began to speak. I always like to go a few scriptures back, but here's where uh, the Lord began to speak to me and about the word that I was to preach and, and to put on uh, the YouTube and on the Facebook and on the different medias uh, and try to reach us lost uh, and dying generation. It, in, in verse 20, he said, Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. He said, Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted into heaven, shall be brought down to hell. And if the mighty works which were done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. And so that scripture there, he said, but I say it's going to be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. And uh, as a confirmation scripture, I'm going to go on over here to, to the book of Luke in chapter 10 and uh, go on down here to uh, verse 11. And he's talking to the ones that he sent out and uh, on the preaching missions and things, and he says, but, uh, but verse 10, back up a little bit. Verse 10 says, But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaves to us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. He goes on and says, Woe, Chorazin, woe, Bethsaida. And he, he's basically repeating the same uh, 
set of scriptures here as, as, as Luke penned these words down and, and uh, he said, he that hears you hears me and he that despises you despises me. He that despises me despises him that sent me. And so the scripture here being that, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. We're living in a time that, that I, we're, we're seeing people that are turning against God we're living in such a godless generation. We're living in a time when people don't know the left from the right. They don't even know, for, for goodness sake, what it even means to repent. And, and today, uh, as I often do, the Lord uh, brought me to these railroad tracks as an example. You know, repent simply this. You're, you're going the wrong way. You turn and you start going the right way. That's what simple, says, the simple explanation of repent means. But in, but in a godly sense, it means, God, I know that, I, that I'm not bearing the, the fruit of righteousness. I, I know that I'm not being helpful to my neighbor. I know that I'm not loving my neighbor. I know I'm not bringing peace into this world. I know I'm always down and out. I know I always speak negativity. I know I, I always look for an uplift from, from an old beer bottle or, or, or different things like that or, or partying or, or doing this event or that event. The, the myriad of, of different imaginations that people have trying to be simply happy that block us from a spiritual walk with God. That is sin. The things that keep you from talking to God, that is the things that God is concerned with. But, but just as the scripture said there, he said, whoa, whoa. he said, it's going to be more tolerable for, for, for uh, Sodom and Gomorrah than, than for you. It's going to be more tolerable in the day of judgment. Uh, we're living in a time, even in the year 2014, when I'm recording this uh, particular message, we've seen blind eyes open. We've, we've seen uh, uh, miracles. We, we've heard of, of hearing being restored. We've seen uh, people turn their lives around. We've, we've seen uh, results of what a good, honest, clean Christian life can mean. We've seen the fruit of righteousness. We've seen those that, that, that pursue after good and do good but yet we don't repent in this country. And God spoke to me and he's, he's let me know and getting to the punchline of this particular message, he's tired of it. God wants this country to repent. God wants this old world to repent. He said that in one place over there, he's using a different example. He, he said truly the great works were done. He said Jonas came and preached to the country of Nineveh and it said the, the men of Nineveh repented. They had enough common sense to repent. But we're living in such an evil and adulterous generation today that we won't even uh, take a moment to hear what thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And so it takes uh, preachers like me and different ones to come and say, God is speaking to you. God expects you to repent. God expects you to love Him. He expects you to worship Him. He expects you to see the beauty of His creation. He expects for you to know that He robed Himself in flesh and He come and He died on an old wooden cross that you might have life and you might have life more abundantly. So the call today is simply to repent. Repent, repent, repent. For God's sake, for goodness sake, for the Lord's sake, repent. For your soul's sake, repent. Because Jesus Christ, the coming and great fearful day of the Lord is at hand. Jesus is soon to split the eastern sky. Jesus is soon to come back. And people's out there lost, wandering to and fro, not knowing their left from their right. And, and the people, uh, uh, so some people even that, that, that pursue and, 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 and try to worship and, and be for God, they've lost their zeal. I'm asking you to get your zeal back. I'm asking you to get your fire back. And the way that you get the fire of God in you is to spend time in prayer, to spend time in the Word of God to spend time meditating on the fact that you are an eternal being and your soul is forever and ever and ever more and that you'll burn in a hot devil's hell if you don't uh, make things right with your soul. I'm asking you simply, if you're going down the track the wrong way, I'm asking you to turn and to come to Jesus. I'm asking you to repent. I'm asking you to be baptized, having all your sins washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ through His mighty, wonderful name, the name of Jesus Christ. These are the end days. These are the days that, that, that men's are, uh, hearts are fear, uh, failing them for fear, 
for what is coming on this world. These are days that if you got to dwelling on how much sin there is, you would think there's no way that we could make it. But God is here to remind you that where, where the sin abounds, that the grace much more abounds. There's more cross. There's more blood of Jesus Christ to go around than you could ever imagine. God so loved the world that He gave the, His only begotten Son that whosoever believed on Him should be saved. Mark that down, should be saved. There's nothing keeping you from going to the watery grave of a, a, a burial in the name of Jesus Christ. There's nothing keeping you in this country right now from being filled with the Holy Ghost. There's nothing in this country right now keeping you from expressing a faith in God. Amen. Except for the lust and the desires of our own flesh in this country. That is the only thing keeping us separated from God. But God has done many great works. God has brought many great revivals to this land. Uh, uh, just recently I heard of a revival going on uh, for five or six weeks in a row up in West Virginia. I heard of another revival uh, uh, down in Arkansas that had been going on for three weeks. Different things like that, different miracles like that. God, even in this day and age, is still pouring out His Spirit upon all men. Amen. But let's, let's touch base with this one more time. He said, but I say unto you, this is Jesus Christ talking, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. But you know, if you go on and read, Jesus said, he answered and he said, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them in the babe. And he goes on at the very end here, even after this sharp rebuke of, of why don't you believe in me? Why don't you believe in the very works that I'm doing? Why can't you understand who God is? Even after all that, after the rejection, he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest into your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm here today preaching about a light burden. I'm, I'm here today preaching about peace and joy beyond your wildest imagination. None of the partying that you're doing, none of anything that you're doing, even comes close to the joy of God Almighty. The only thing in life that gives a man peace, that fills that void in his heart, is Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. But God spoke to me, and He, he said, Give him a warning. Give them a warning that it's going to be more tolerable for, for even places that had wickedness. It's going to be more tolerable than for the ones that see the signs and the works of God. Truly, there's always a sign. In this case, Jesus said, An adulterous and evil generation seeks after a sign, but your only sign is going to be as Jonah uh, was three days in, in the, the well of the, the belly of the well and, and, and came forth. Jesus was in the belly of the earth for three days and came forth. That was their sign. That is your final sign today. It's time to repent. It's time to repent with tears and with sorrow and with an humble heart of humility before Jesus Christ. And, and, and we're without excuse. God still anoints men and sends men and, and women with a message. He sends pe people into your life. He sends preachers into your life. He sends uh, Christians that are full of the Spirit in your life to say and to show you that there is a book of life that is written in their heart by the blood of Jesus Christ. I like saying these things. I like preaching these things. I'm a happy camper today because of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I close with this simple thought that I've been sharing with you. It's going to be more tolerable for people that haven't even seen the signs and wonders and still yet some of them a few of them found God or had a way of looking for God I say very specifically to my own country here United States of America the country I'm from is a God fearing country this country was founded on Jesus Christ this country was founded upon free worship and I'm, just, uh, I'm begging you please Take advantage, worship the Lord Jesus Christ before it's eternally too.
too late. Amen. Amen. I thank you. I praise you for listening today. I praise you and I thank you for listening to the Word of God. I, I'm so thankful today that the Word of God goes forward into people's hearts just like you. Act on the Word of God before it's eternally too late. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, 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 amen. And start going the right way.